Hi, my name is Alex, and on this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to walk you through how I made some goblins for Dungeons & Dragons. So, I went about making these miniatures a little bit differently than I normally would, because rather than basing them off of my own designs, I decided I wanted to base them off of some miniatures that I already had. So this guy is one of Reaper Miniatures Goblin Pyros, and so since I already have a set of these guys, I thought it would be cool to make some more that I can play with alongside these guys. So, to start out with, I cut out a long piece of wire, folding it half and clamping it down with some pliers as normal. But then I make sure to measure it with the minis that I'm trying to copy when I start to twist it, as you can see here. Then I go in and add the hips of the miniature, again making sure that this is in line with the miniatures that I'm basing it off of. And then go ahead and do the knees in the same way. I then cut out a really long piece of wire, especially for what I'm going to be using it for, so that I can make the arms. And the reason that I'm cutting it this long is because I want them to be holding spears, and I'm going to use the excess wire where their hands will be as the main shaft of the spear. As you can see here, I'm measuring out how long the arm is so I can get that right as well. I then clamp down the arms and glue them onto the armature, and then I end up with two armatures that look kind of like this. Now that the armatures are done, I can start posing them. I wanted one of the guys to look like he was charging forward with his spear, and you can see me working on that pose here, and the other I was thinking would have a more neutral pose, just holding his spear kind of butt on the ground and sticking up into the air. And here you can see me actually putting the finished armature onto the cork bottles. And they look something like this. Then I hit the miniatures with a file. And here I'm adding another piece of wire to the spear so that there's wire running through the whole spear as opposed to just part of it. Making sure to do that on both miniatures. I then can start putting on my first layer of green stuff, kind of wrapping it around the armature, adding a nice thin coat over the spear. Then with their first layer, this is what the miniatures look like. Then I can start building up the armor of these guys. They kind of have this ununiform leather armor, so here you can see me adding a little indentation where it might have been broken, and here I'm adding the shoulder pads that they all seem to have. I then move on to give them a loincloth using a needle to create a kind of fur texture, as you can see here. Once that's done, I give them these kind of weird leg bits and can start adding other details that I've seen on the miniatures that I'm referencing. I then move on to do the feet that have these wraps around them, then use a craft knife to add all these folds in them to make it look like a cloth or textile after which I add a little bit more green stuff and texture out the feet. I then go on and add a little bit more green stuff to the arms to build them out, and give them the same cloth wraps that we see on the feet. I can then start working on the hands, adding a bit of green stuff and use a craft knife to sculpt in some fingers. After letting all those details set, I go back in with a craft knife and cut out all these little indentations in the armor to make it look worn and used. Looking at the miniatures that I was basing this off of, they all have these little X's on their armor, and you can see me adding those here. I then go around to both of the miniatures, adding these little X's where I see them on the miniatures that I'm referencing. I then add a little bit more green stuff to the spears to make them more uniform. After that, I can start working on the spearheads, and I decided that I wanted to base their design off of the swords that the other goblin miniatures are using. And so putting some green stuff on a sculpting tool, I get the basic shape with a rubber sculpting tool, and add in the little holes with these metal circles, and going in with a needle to make them actually holes and not just indentations and then I do this again for the other spear. I then add little balls of green stuff for the heads of the goblins, putting a little indentation in this one for the mouth that's going to be open, and then I let those set. 
While I let those set, I start working on some of the other details, like some wraps that I wanted to put on this guy's spear, and some pouches and things that I noticed were on all the other goblin miniatures. On this guy, I added a little knife to go with the pouch on his back, going on to then give him a little belt to go with that. And then on this guy, as well as one of the standard pouches that seemed to be on all the miniatures, I added another kind of more square pouch, just to add a little bit of variation. I then move on to do the faces now that the little balls that I had put in before had set. Starting with the brow, as you can see here, kind of sculpting in a angry furrowed face. And then I begin to build up the green stuff a little bit more right now, giving him what kind of looks to be a mustache of some sort. And then adding some more to give him a jaw and less of a mustache. I then go on to add the ears, which as you can see here, I do by putting on a bit of a triangle of green stuff. Uh, blending that in with a rubber tool and then adding a little bit of detail inside the ear with another rubber tool. I then added a little bit more green stuff to the cheekbone that because I saw it was a little bit small. I can then move on to add the eye in the eye sockets and add some teeth for this guy whose mouth is open. And on this guy I decided to give him a bit of a hat, which unfortunately I didn't film. I then move on to put the spearheads on the spears by adding a little bit of green stuff and sticking that onto the end of the spears. I go ahead and add as much green stuff as needed and sculpt that out into the spearhead shape, kind of mimicking what I did before. And then go on to add tiny little bits of green stuff here represent what's kind of holding the spearhead onto the shaft of the spear. And you see here I also add some little bolts to that. I then get rid of any excess green stuff like on this guy's spear and add some final details. With that the sculpts are finished and they're ready for priming. And once they're primed I can actually start painting them finally. Uh, here I add a base tone of a kind of dark green and do a base tone for the armor of a darkish brown. I then go around and add the other base tones, like here adding an off-white for all of the wraps, and adding a slightly different off-white for all of the X's and other little straps, and then adding a different brown for the different pouches. I then hit the spearhead with a gray with a hint of silver in it to give it a slightly metallic feel. Once I finish all the base coats, I can start adding some shadows and highlights. Here I'm adding a base dark tone, kind of loosely in all of the areas that I feel need it. And then I add a highlight. And the way I'm adding a highlight is a technique that I haven't used before, which is called glazing, where you add a very watered down highlight to a place, and with a dry brush, you kind of wipe off all the excess and create a gradient, doing this over and over again until you have the highlight where you want it. Once that's done, I can start adding a wash onto the rest of the miniature. And I made this wash by getting some really, really watered down brown paint and adding a little bit of ink, like maybe one or two drops at most. And I make sure to mostly hit the areas with large creases, so in this case it would be mostly like the cloth wraps that are around the miniature. Once that's done, I add some dry brushing onto the spearheads with a fairly loaded brush of white and go at a couple different angles to make it look kind of banged up. I then go in and add the final details, namely the red for the eyes and some white dots for where the teeth are on this one guy. And with that, all these miniatures need are a base and then they're finished. Making these miniatures is a very cool challenge. It was interesting having to follow another sculptor's style and design choices. Especially since normally the way that I make miniatures is kind of designing them as I go. So having to conform to another sculptor's design was definitely an interesting change of pace. 
Before I close off the video, I did want to mention that a lot of you guys have been asking me about what materials and what tools I use and asking me to show off a couple of the uh, techniques that I use for sculpting. So what I'm going to be doing is next week having a slightly more tutorial oriented video that should be less about the miniature that I'm making and more giving you guys a guide on how you can all make your own. So you can look forward to that next week. But anyways, uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more, you can subscribe and hit the notifications. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.